Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another session of the WNS Operative Grand Rounds. We have an exciting new series of sessions related to technical nuances for complex spine procedures. Our first session is on mini open transpedicular thoracic corpectomy. Dr. Jean Pierre Maubasser, one of my colleagues, will be the moderator for the following sessions. We hope that you find these sessions instructive and at the same time enjoyable. Thank you. Grand rounds, and our topic today is a complex spine surgery. With us today, we have Dean Chow from University of California at San Francisco, and I'm Jean Pierre Mobasser with Goodman Campbell Brain and Spine in Indianapolis. Good afternoon, Dean. Good afternoon, Jean Pierre. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have an interesting topic mini open transpedicular corpectomies. Uh, Dean, tell me, how long have you been working on these? We started doing this for about three years, uh, and uh, off and on, uh, this sort of evolved from an open technique. Great. And let's go through our disclosures and state that none of these uh, disclosures had any influence on what was done here today. Um, so let's start with indications. Uh, can you give me an idea of the types of patients you believe are good candidates for a mini open posterior corpectomy? Uh, the greatest indication is probably those with a tumor or infection but also trauma and deformity patients would be appropriate for this. Great. And uh, how do you decide whether or not to go anterior versus posterior when you're doing these kinds of operations? I think a lot of it depends upon surgeon comfort level and the anatomy of the patient if they've had previous thoracic surgery and also the patient's physiology. Okay. Are there patients that you believe are not candidates for a posterior who would still be a candidate for an anterior approach? I think those patients would be uh, patients in whom one would be concerned about wound healing, such as patients who've been on chronic steroids or patients who've been radiated. You probably want to avoid the posterior approach because, in general, it's a higher infection rate from a posterior approach. Okay. And in, in your um, discussion of this, we obviously see that there's less blood loss and less operative time doing a posterior approach. Uh, but one thing that you've mentioned is uh, better neurological outcomes with the posterior approach. Can you explain that? Yes, we've looked at 80 patients, uh, and uh, about half underwent an anterior approach and half underwent a transpedicular approach. And we found a statistically significant difference in that the patients with the transpedicular corpectomy had greater recovery. And we're not exactly sure why. We postulate it may be... Uh, circumferential bone removal, immediate stabilization, and that you don't have to ligate the segmentals like you do from an anterior approach. But we're not exactly sure why it happened, but that's what we saw. Okay. Uh, and in choosing an anterior approach versus a posterior, we also have to discuss uh, the ribs and what you do with these. And I understand that this has been something that you've uh, written about, whether to just... Uh, cut the ribs and move them uh, out of the way versus remove the rib completely. And a lot of that has to do with the pleural effusion problem that you've seen in removing the rib heads. Yes, uh, I, that's one thing I noticed that I would take the rib head out just doing a standard costotransrosectomy and the patients do fine. And then post up day three, they desaturate and you get an x-ray and there's a, a pleural effusion there. And so what I did was I decided to just cut the rib and not uh, remove it. Okay. Well, why don't we get straight to it and let's discuss an open procedure and make sure that everybody's comfortable with the anatomy and discussing before we move on to a mini open. Uh, in an open procedure, uh, we have to have a, a good exposure and it actually has to be a wide exposure to expose those ribs in order to get lateral enough to place the cage. Obviously, localizing is going to be an issue and uh, making sure that you have good localization is critical to these types of surgeries. Uh, Dean, uh, tell us how you prefer to localize in performing these operations. I tend to localize from T1 down with an AP X-ray just because S1 is so far away and T2 is so far away and the lateral T-spine through the upper thoracic spine is so difficult with the shoulders. And I don't use the 12th rib because some people have 13 ribs and some people have, 12, have 11 ribs. So I tend to just go from T1 down. And I think it's also important to mention that uh, radiologists tend to count differently. So I think when a radiologist labels a certain number in the thoracic spine, it's critical to understand how your radiologist arrived at that value when you're determining where you're going to operate. 
Uh, luckily, a lot of times these fractures are obvious enough that on a plain lateral image you can see the fracture itself or 